to start now. Thank you for coming uh, to our info hour. And I think that we should introduce ourselves first. So. Yeah, so <laughs> we're going to be the people doing the whole media team thing. Um, I'm Hannah. I study media and communications in Aberystwyth. So I quite like the whole media topic. Um, uh, and my name is Lisa. Um, those who were in the ICJ Info Hour uh, yesterday might find me familiar. Uh, but I'm currently a third year law student uh, in the University of Tartu, but from uh, on my free time, I'm very interested in media and I'm currently working as a journalist. So I think we, we both are somewhat qualified to talk on this topic. Uh, but today, uh, our info hour, hour is separated into three parts. First is the general information about uh, Estman, and then we are going to go more in depth about the media team. And then finally, uh, we're going to answer your questions if you have any. So, um, just a quick overview. I know some of you have been in previous info hours, so I'm going to make it quite brief. Uh, model United Nation is a very common sort of format. It's an educational role play to practice uh, diplomacy skills um, and try your hand at uh, international relationships. Um, it's for high school or university students worldwide. The age range depends. But our event is an entry level simulation. So everybody, regardless of previous experience, uh, is welcome. And our working language is English. It's used in every single uh, committee or workshop. And what's special about us is that every year we try to do something different to introduce some new formats or twist already existing ones. So for example, in 2019, we introduced the media team. Uh, in 2020, we tried out the historical committee on the Cuban Missile Crisis. And this year, we are also having the International Court of Justice dealing with war crimes. Um, there are a couple of links uh, for more information, and I think they should appear in chat. But moving on uh, with this year's conference, uh, it takes place from June 10th to June 13th in Damsalo uh, Gymnasium. We're going to have five committees, um, three traditional ones, one court and one media team uh, who all meet uh, during the general, general assembly during the first day and the last. So working in committees, um, the students, participants can step into the shoes of real uh, UN delegates uh, to engage in different sorts of debates. And the aim is to find solutions to problems that are out there, uh, they're important. So the aim is to write resolutions or write articles and try to pick apart the issue at hand. Um, and that usually these hard days full of work are usually, uh, uh, they usually end in some sort of socializing activity. We want you to have fun. And for that, we have a lot of recreational activities plan for our conference. Um, yeah, so whether uh, ESMIN 2021 will be in person, if it will be hybrid or if it will be online, um, the decision should be made um, around next week. Um, what's going to happen depends fully on the local governmental government's guidance and all that jazz. Um, but we will provide all necessary information and support, no matter what the situation is going to be. But because the safety of our participants and organizers is our main priority, we will have to listen to what the government says and we will have to make the most sensible decision. 
Um, but yeah, and we want you to be very motivated and engaged to kind of take part in this and to really enjoy what you're doing. Uh, so as I mentioned previously, this year we're going to have uh, five uh, committees. We have one on climate change. We have International Court of Justice dealing with war crimes and mercenaries. We have media um, tackling um, uh, media bias and ownership. Then we have UN Security Council and the Refugee Agency. Uh, all of the info hours are happening or did happen during this week. So if you made it this far, uh, there was uh, the info hour on climate change and International Court of Justice, respectively, on Monday and then Tuesday. And something else from the general side is conference rules. These apply for the general committees, um, which are the climate change one, Security Council and the human rights. Uh, it's a little bit different for um, uh, for media or for International Court of Justice, but the main parts are business attire, um, following proper procedures, um, being polite and respectful of others. And our aim is for you to enjoy your participation. So we want you to take the main role and we are only the mediators in this situation. And all of this information, um, the business attire, voting procedures, for example, or any like requirements will be in the info packs that I think we're sending out sometime next week, I believe. Um, now the cool part starts. <laughs> Let's first watch a really cool video. Um, I hope it works. It was in 2019 when I realized something was wrong. The pieces just weren't adding up. So I started digging. Suddenly, it dawned on me and I knew what I had to do. This June, the truth will be revealed. Join Estonian Media Team to find out. And remember, we want you. That was our trailer. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, so the media team. Our topic this year is going to be how to create the narrative or how media ownership and personal bias influences the public discourse. And with it, our aim is going to be to kind of critically evaluate the impact that media ownership and personal bias has on media and how to recognize these biases. Um, so who's going to be looking over you during this whole process is going to be me, I'm Hannah and Lisa. Um, and yeah, so what we're going to talk about this year more in depth is kind of we're going to look at who owns the media, look at different forms of media ownership and why it matters and stuff like that. And we will be like investigating where does the real power lie and who is the one like kind of controlling the media. Mm. We're also going to look at how does personal bias affect journalism and kind of the whole thing around personal bias and media and all that jazz and what kind of impact it has. We're also going to be trying to looking at um, what is fake news and is there such a thing as fake news? And also like in that kind of sense, is there such a thing as completely unbiased media? Can we create the totally unbiased media or is that just something that we kind of are hoping for? And in the purpose of this um, whole event, we also made a website, um, which are still going to be, it's a blog, yeah, <laughs> that we're going to be updating. Um, so um, yes, wait, I'm going to do a small little preview. Um, it's the Esmond um, Exposing Project, because uh, 
conspiracies are real sometimes and you know we want you to know about the truth and that the truth is out there um we won't scroll anymore on that just in case the uh, format yeah the fun part is the format of the media team um and basically the participants will be divided into different outlets and uh, the number and the size of outlets will be uh, dependent on how many participants are there and how many committees. So how we choose the outlets is based on trying to achieve um, the situation where all ends of the media bias spectrum or political leaning spectrum is represented so we have um, outlets that are lar considered largely to be unbiased. Uh, you might think of Reuters, Le Monde, BBC. Uh, we have con conspiracy sites and we have politically leaning newspapers. So looking at 2019, uh, we had uh, BBC, um, and then we had, for example, The Rebel, which was uh, a very right-leaning political outlet. And then we had Vice, uh, that was a very um, left-leaning um, outlet. And then we had BuzzFeed that did their own thing. Um, but overall, the tasks for journalists um, is to attend committee meetings and report on uh, the topics and that the committees cover, looking through this media bias lens that their own outlet has. So for example, if you represent um, a very right-leaning outlet, then you would be looking through that lens. Um, and the articles will be published on our media website. We actually have uh, this lovely website where there are actually articles from previous years and you can actually see some of the titles from 2019. You would have BBC, um, very straightforward reporting on the committee activity. Um, and then you had everyone else angry at BuzzFeed. Um, and we also have separate activities for the media team plan, such as roundtable discussions on the topics Hannah mentioned, uh, different debates and recreational activities. Uh, media team in previous years was interesting. So um, a little bit of a backstory. Uh, Hanna was actually a participant in 2019. Uh, I participated in 2018. Uh, it wasn't a media team per se that I participated in, but it was a regular committee uh, that focused on legislation around fake news. So from there, uh, I participated in an MUN in Belgium uh, where they practice this media format. And, you know, uh, this thought came to life that why not bring this format over and explore it a little bit in our co context. So media team premiered in uh, Estland 2019 and by 2020, it had become the most popular committee. Um, and in 2019, we had a night crisis, um, a talk show and a press conference uh, at the General Assembly. So I would actually throw this ball to Hanna to talk a little bit more about your experience as a participant um, um, no, the thing is, so, um, yeah, so I participated in 2019, and I, I, I remember that at first I was, like, really torn between, like, should I join the media team, or should I, like, go and join the regular committee, but in the end, because I was, like, at that time kind of considering about whether I should go and study media or not, I was like, you know what, I'll do it, if I hate it, then it's fine, if I don't hate it, well, then that's even better, um, ended up joining it. And it was genuinely so much fun. Because the thing is, like, I was really concerned that, um, oh, all the other committees are kind of more like country based. And they, like, that was the kind of format that I knew that MUN 
was supposed to look like. So I was like, well, the media team is going to be boring because like I won't have any friends and I can't chat with anyone. But oh gosh, I think most of the drama during the whole like event happened because of the media team and happened in the media team. Like it was, it was so much fun. Um, if you ask me how many like genuinely serious articles I wrote, it would be an embarrassingly low number. But the amount of articles we ended up writing, I, I was working for Vice, so I made horoscopes. It was fun. Um, I also in, like participated in dissing BuzzFeed. That was also really fun. Um, the whole night crisis thing, horrendous. <laughs> I was I was not prepared for it, and they just ran up. They ran around the like whole like building, and they just woke everyone up at like two a.m. I think it was. Um, I am really blind, but because they woke us up so quickly. I forgot to take my classes with me and they were taking us to a different building, to a different room. And I had to look at things happening in the far distance while like also trying to understand what's going on while I couldn't see a single thing. <laughs> I've never been so angry at anyone in my life, but it was genuinely just so much fun. And then when we had the whole discussion thing, I'm like going on a ramble because like genuinely I loved it. Um, when we had the whole like um, discussion thing or like the one where we were questioning um, participants, the one that you can see on the picture um, where they also get the scoreboard. It was it was just a burn off of who could be who could burn the other team more. Would it be like the journalist or if it was the, um, you know, committee members? It was so much fun. It was genuinely so fun. And by the end of it, like this event was the thing that made me completely sure that I would join or like study media afterwards. Cause I was like, you know what? This was fun. That means that everything to do with media has to be fun. <laughs> and that's like a completely unbiased opinion. That is not biased at all. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, I'll stop now. <laughs> um, it was an interesting year to be sure. Uh, the talk show, especially created a lot of buzz because we thought that you know we have five delegates five journalists they would ask hard-hitting questions instead um yeah and it went really out of hand really quickly but it was so much fun that um we kept the format so uh, everything in media team, because it's such a new format, is up to change. And our goal is to actually be fun and educational at the same time. So, for example, I know that some people worried beforehand that, you know, I haven't written articles before or I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to conduct an interview. The thing is, these things I can say as a journalist myself, I have no formal education as a journalist um, these things come through practice and what's a better place to practice than with your own peers asking these outlandish questions and I think it gives a lot of good personal experiences and a lot of good skills and confidence to do these things in the future uh, if you're in if any of you uh, are interested in that but we actually have the uh, outlet that we publish all of the previous articles in I think we could open it maybe yeah this is a more professional one <laughs> this is the official one <laughs> but yeah it has all the cool articles see vice daily horoscopes um, personally really proud of that one um, but yeah there's not much to see here. It's all the calls, but yeah, BuzzFeed made a quiz. So it's really fun, like genuinely. Can do whatever you want. And I think that we can actually move on to the next slide. Uh, that's the preparation for the conference. So we were told that we have to um, inform you to look at other uh, topics as well, even though, let's be honest, ours is the best um but uh actually no jokes just look at the topics at face value uh what are you the most interested in 
what do you want to research and then register. Uh, there should be a magical link somewhere in the chat. And uh, if you register, uh, you will be sent an info pack and you can start uh, preparing for the work ahead. And most importantly, and we're really hoping for a physical or at least a hybrid conference so we could actually see you all there. Yeah, and like Chengyi, the thing is like, I don't know if you noticed, but um, we, we kind of want to make this like really fun. And the whole approach for this is to kind of, is to make it fun, but yet still kind of it like educational. So honestly, for us, like the main thing is that you just it's if you, if you don't you don't have to take it too seriously. Um, I don't know if I will get like knocked down for saying it, but you don't need to take it too seriously. As long as you're enjoying yourself and you feel like you're getting some sort of like actual like value out of it, then that's the main thing. Because honestly, having fun is super great. So you should have fun. But yeah. actually make it an official slogan: Media Team. Where are the fun ones? <laughs> yeah, which is fun. <laughs> um, okay, but now it's time for questions. So uh, be open, uh, ask whatever you want. We're really open to them. Yes, thank you. Um, I have a question about if I if I'm joining the media team, then uh, how is the best way to prepare for it? Or um, how does the, I, I haven't researched like how the media team works or anything because I haven't heard, of, heard about it, uh, <laughs> never. It's really interesting and I, I, and I liked your presentation. It was, it was uh, informal and it was really very enjoyable. So thank you for that. Um, but should I um, research the other committee topics or what's the best way to prepare? Thank you. Uh Oh, thank you so much for the question and the kind words. Uh, so I would say uh, the best way to prepare is to um, look at the outlet that um, either you chose or we are assigning the outlets later. We're asking for your input. What outlet do you want to represent? And then um, it's very good to do research on the um, outlet itself what's the bias and then maybe um, because the journalists work so together with the delegates and the committee members um, look at what committee uh, is interesting for you like what topic is some something that you want to you know grill people over uh, so it's 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 a really fun one I know that it's very very popular I know from 2019 it was uh, I think the Security Council that a lot of journalists preferred, but overall, it's it's very good to look at the committees and um, kind of work through like um, yeah things you want to grill people over because this is the job of the journalist to really get to the bottom of things. And I think that the main purpose of journalists in those kind of events are not letting the delegates get away with everything. So uh, in their own world, in their committee, they are bound by in, like formal debates. They have to be polite to each other and they cannot say certain things out loud. They cannot ask certain things, but journalists can. And it's very important to push the delegates in that manner. And especially it's good if it's about some topic you're interested in yeah like personally i can say because i like in 2019 uh, the amount of research that i did is that um and you shouldn't do this because you should be better than i was but <laughs> i i kind of just looked at so because i ended up like representing vice i kind of looked at what were the like overall head titles for what vice did um what were the topics that they usually talked about and I just went in there with like a bunch of ideas in my head about like what I would want to do and how I would want to do it. And yeah, and like, as Lisa said, you kind of look at what committee it is that you want to like bully people about, but in a nice way. 
because <laughs> like it's 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 really fun it's genuinely really really fun because you get to just poke at the pair and be like hey hey but you said something that was kind of dumb so now i can like bully you about it and it's not like in a harmful way it's just like in a kind of pokey way it's fun <laughs> yeah i just remember uh it was during the first night after the delegates made their formal speeches and all of their very um, uh, public opinions on certain things. And there were certain delegates who, from the start, started giving out controversial opinions. And uh, one of them was, uh, I think, the delegate representing uh, the Russian Federation in the Security Council at that time. And he would run up to me and tell me, like, what's going on? Your journalists are bullying me. Um, turns out that he might have threatened to suffocate somebody with a pillow. I'm not sure what happened there. I read about it afterwards, after my journalist wrote about it, sort of. So so this is, this is what happens, I think, that um, find the committee you're interested in and think um, and look into the outlet. This is the condensed advice. I know that we um, made a long speech about it. So yes, we have a raised hand. Uh, so thank you for this presentation. It was really interesting. And my question is, uh, what is the main idea of being in this committee? Is it to only write articles or maybe do something more? Mm. So I think the oh, thank you for the question, by the way. Thank you. Um, and the kind words. I can also say thanks. Um, but um, so I think the main outlet is going to be that it's, uh, you're going to be writing articles. But we also kind of want to talk more about kind of, I don't want to say media theory, because that sounds boring. But like the theory behind it and like information regarding media ownership and stuff. And we want you guys to kind of sit together and discuss about these topics and to talk about them. And so you can like kind of, so you will also have some form of like discussion as the other committees will have. Um, because otherwise just like sitting behind your computer and writing all the course might get really boring really quickly. And that's why we kind of want to also build this sort of like discussion circles and all that chess. Um, and and I would say one uh, other part is very um, very important is the part about accountability. So, for example, uh, it's the job of the journalist to look at oh, you as a delegate from I don't know United States, you said this, but then you voted like that. Like, why did you do that? And it's very important to be like like the media in real life you have to shine a light to shady things that people do and a lot of the times it's um politicians and like victoria said there is <clears throat> the whole aspect of you can also go up to committee members after the whole official meetings and stuff and ask them for interviews um, you can ask them for interviews like I, I remember we did like during the first night I think everyone else was kind of chilling or trying to chill and I remember that us journalists we were just kind of running around and annoying people with like hey the thing is tomorrow can we have an interview with you um, and yeah the whole talk show thing that we had um, that's probably I don't know it, uh, I assume it's happening this year too it is yeah. absolutely and yeah, and we ended up finishing the whole event with like a large press conference where the journalists go once again ask very hard hitting questions from the committee members and stuff like that. Mm. It's a, yeah, it's like Lisa said, it's a lot about holding like everyone else in the event like accountable for everything they've done in very different formats, but still kind of holding them accountable because I feel like without the media team they could just go out there and say whatever they want but if you have the media team next to them it's like hey you said something dumb and you thought that no one remembers but we do so why <laughs> so I think that's like that's that <laughs> uh, I remember from my personal experience um, I mentioned briefly that we borrowed this format from Belgium 
Um, and during the Belgian MUN, I represented a news outlet called uh, the Pakistani Dawn. And I remember the articles were like a part of it. The rest was holding the delegates accountable. I think I was a part of a public protest that ended with me getting thrown out of the conference hall. Uh, not not in a serious way, just as part of the whole role playing situation. But I think that it's we're not going to do that just to preface it. But I think that it's a lot of playroom. Like uh, what's special about the media team is that you can change it to your interest, basically. So when delegates are bound by the topic, the rules of conduct, all of those things then media team can really narrow in on certain topics or I don't know stage a public protest or poke the delegates in some way yeah it's gonna be fun I promise like I had so much fun I genuinely I didn't think I was gonna have that much fun not gonna lie but I did it was so cool it was just... I, f- I feel like I'm like overhyping it and I'm kind of scared but like it, it genuinely is it was cool it was really cool <laughs> so once again please feel free to ask questions oh yes please Anakin? yes thank you um will the articles be written like individually or in teams like if i write for for example like vice then will i be working with somebody or will i be uh, just working alone Uh, You'll be working with somebody. All of the articles will uh, come out under the vice name. Uh, Ideally, everyone in your team has their own task and we can and you can all coordinate. Um, But working together on articles is is very important. For example, taking interviews uh, you do in teams and all of those uh, big projects are in teams. So we really want to build this um, uh, team spirit. Yeah, and I remember that for us that um, we had, like, at least, like, when I was working in Vice, we also did this whole, like, we had this idea that after, if the people in my team had finished with their articles, I told them to kind of send it to me as, like, a head editor so I could be, like, maybe maybe we can change this a little bit or maybe we can change that a little bit so in that sense it was also kind of like a group work even though they might have written it alone because of like the committee that they were sitting on in but I was like dead at that so I guess you can kind of establish a person like that in your team too if you feel like it if you don't feel like it well then that's cool too but yeah mm. Uh, one more side note for the end of it. I know that we're hyping up the completely physical conference right now, but it's important to talk about how all of these things will look um, it, during the online conference. So we will try to, for example, uh, maintain um, as much as the format allows all of these activities. Uh, I know it, it, it's, it gets a little bit more difficult because uh, you cannot just go up to somebody in a hallway and ask for an interview. But I think that through the power of technology um, and due to the fact that real journalists also currently work online, there are a lot of great solutions and I think that we can use all of it. And during this if it comes to an online conference, which I really hope it doesn't, um, then uh, this group work and teamwork is is even more important. Yeah. It's gonna be fun anyways, like no matter what, for sure. You get to spend like three days with us overlooking over you, come on. It has to be fun, <laughs> not biased at all. So maybe anything about um, the format, more maybe specific questions. Um, and can we actually give a spoiler list about the possible outlets? What do you think, Hanna? 
I kind of wanna. I'm really excited about the media outlet, so I really wanna. <laughs> okay, so please, Hannah. So, um, um, what we were thinking about? So we currently have five outlets planned, um, but this might change depending on how many people sign up for the media team. Like we can't be too sure. But um, when it comes to the unbiased um, news and stuff, then we were thinking about having BNS, um, which is the Baltic News Service, I hope, right? Yes, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> um, so BNS, because it's pretty much unbiased. Um, when it comes to the other, like kind of the more biased um, outlets, then one of the like outlets that we were thinking about is Fox News due to its um, right bias. Um, then and Fox News is um, of course um, it's it's American, but it's run by Ruben Murdoch, which I think is or like the Murdoch Empire, um, which is, I think, a very interesting thing to talk about in general when it comes to media ownership. Um, the Murdoch Especially. Media. Especially under media ownership, I think it's. it's yeah. Like, oh, I have so many runs to go on about it. <laughs> um, but then we also have Global Times, which is a left bias media so outlet, and I'm sure Lisa can talk more about Global Times. Yeah, um, I just have a small commercial to make. Um, we have cats also, uh, but basically. Um, uh, Global Times is a uh, Chinese uh, state newspaper, uh, one of the oldest and more the largest distributed newspaper, and it has a strong state bias. And when we're talking about media ownership, um, just to give a sneak peek into this topic, we recognize three different types. There's privately owned, which would be, for example, the... Uh, Murdoch Empire uh, state-owned, for example, like uh, Global Times is owned by um, uh, the state, and um, then the community-owned, which are quite rare. But when you think about community-owned, um, these are usually these really, really local uh, newspapers uh, run by communities. Yeah, community-owned newspapers are oftentimes yeah kind of on the base thing is, but um no, I I just get excited over media topics. I can talk about these like the whole day. I don't care. Um, that's all I care about. But um, another like media outlet that we have that is a uh, state-owned one is Rodong Shinwon, which is the it's extremely left biased and it's it's, it's extremely state biased because it's the North Korean uh, news outlet or like the newspaper. Um, and we think it's going to be like really interesting because I know that a lot of people kind of have uh, this opinion that perhaps like the Chinese outlet and the North Korean one might be similar, but we kind of want to we kind of want to poke you to find the differences and like understand that they are actually really different and the bias in them is very different in that sense. Um, yeah, I do have to say the North uh, Korean um, website for the outlet is a very fun place to visit. Even if you don't end up in the media team, which you should, and if you don't choose this outlet, just check the website out. Um, it's 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 fun, it's but it's it's a solid. <laughs> um, and oh, then... it's from two thousand and three. Um, sorry, a <laughs> small note. Um, no. But um, continuing on, I think we have some more. Yeah. Okay. So this is the last one, and this is the one that we're like the most excited by. I think. I think we can say that, and that's um, Infowars, which is very low on factual reporting. It is conspiracy pseudoscience. Um, it has an extreme right bias. Um, I mean, Mr. Alex Jones is in the front of it. Like, come on. <laughs> um, and it's uh, private owned. Yeah. And for that, like what we were thinking, about, we were thinking with Infowars. Um, so because Infowars and Alex Jones is a very kind of 
he he makes videos he makes podcasts um so we were thinking about like if this event uh, if it's in person then you could make either like podcasts or videos and if it's online then perhaps like a podcast or like podcast kind of recordings you don't have to infowars also has like text based um, articles and stuff like that but we were just thinking it would be like kind of cool and like if you, if you looked at the website or like the blog that we created and stuff like that and the whole trailer and stuff then we are extremely inspired by infowars we find it like <laughs> We, we just we just find it interesting i think that's fair um and so we kind of yeah our our overall theme with the whole media team is because we, we like it and we kind of want to distantly participate you know so um we're doing a kind of conspiracy blog trailer thing is um so yeah um info wars is cool but yeah um I think that's it. I don't. I don't think we have any more outlets. Maybe Lisa has something more to say about Infowars, though. Uh, Infowars, not so much. The only limitation uh, to it, and I think it's important to mention because we are kind of taking this conspiracy um, angle to all of this, is that with conspiracy theorists, you get a lot of offensive material, and we really want to avoid that. Um, so I think that it's important. We're going to address it later, uh, more in relation with, uh, these outlets and info packs, but I think it's very, very, um, uh, important to maintain that balance and to avoid these materials because the, the important thing to talk about with people like Alex Jones and conspiracy theory websites like Infowars is that even though they might seem outrageous at first, um, there are some really insidious things behind it. Yeah, and I like that's the whole thing. Like that's the whole reason why we're kind of doing this is, like, yeah, recently this whole kind of I think especially with the whole COVID situation, which I know that everyone is like super sick of hearing about, um, but with it you can see a lot of you you can see a lot of conspiracy theories and media outlets like that kind of or not media outlets but like groups and stuff like that kind of rising up and becoming really prominent and also being seen like in our day-to-day -day lives when we go outside whatever like all those protests happening and stuff like that and it's oftentimes kind of fueled by information that we read from certain media and certain media outlets and so uh, I think it's very like important to talk about this to talk about bias and ownership of media and the whole like fake news aspect of it, because it is such an it is such an important topic to kind of familiarize yourself with, especially kind of in your everyday lives, because um, it is like a very on topic kind of a thing, and it's always kind of important, even when we don't have a global pandemic happening. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, especially as you mentioned during this time, it's just especially important because. I remember I've been in these conspiracy circles as a as a viewer. I would say I didn't I haven't participated in them yet, but um, I remember I I I looked some looked up some weird conspiracy theory video about chemtrails a couple of years ago, and the day before yesterday I had to read about that obscure conspiracy theory about secret nanoparticles from our national newspaper so the way these conspiracy theories make their way into our public consciousness is a really important topic to to open up and so yeah this is why we put info wars on it why we did the video the trailer uh the website all of them are conspiracy themed is that it's actually it's a very easy avenue to use uh and it's a very um unfair one in certain situations i would say mm. do we like that yeah does anyone does anyone have any questions while we've been rambling because I, I we talk a lot we always do but <laughs> If you, if you have any questions regarding anything, then um, shoot. 
but I think that if you don't have any further questions, we don't ha have to actually wait here until four. So if you don't have any further questions, then we can end it early. But it's very important for us that if you have any further questions, please ask us through email or through uh, the Facebook page so that we could uh, give any additional uh, information. And uh, please pick the media team. Yeah, and let me finish it with oh. a beautiful slide that oh, I was shit. talking about earlier. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <laughs> Because I personally, uh, we put effort in. I uh, we put effort into this. We had a photo shoot, right? Um, spoiler. Um, I I had hoped that you forgot about these. Never. <laughs> Why? Because you know what? We want you. Um, this is this is a public announcement. <laughs> this is this is the the tone we want to take, I guess. We hope you enjoyed the whole presentation, and we really do hope that you'll choose me too. Because it's cool. Media is cool. Okay, so thank you so much for participating. And hopefully, uh, we'll see all of you at least in some form uh, in June. Thank you very much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for participating.